Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, looking at you and listening to you, it's certainly different to the operating room that I'm used to working in. Uh, but don't feel a bit disappointed that during my presentation, I'll take, take you into this hospital. I'll take you into the operating room. Uh, some of these things that you see, you might not like. Uh, but certainly, it's very real to what we want to talk about today. I'd also like to say, Mr. Chairman, that uh, I didn't recognize the hospital you said where we did this operation. <laughs> um, if you want to see me afterwards, I'll tell you that you say Grote Skier Hospital. But you've got to be a hairy Dutchman to be able to understand that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored, really indeed, and privileged to be part of you here today and part of the insurance industry. I believe very greatly and very sincerely about a great tomorrow, and my profession is striving to bring that to the health of peoples and nations. I've been very fortunate to be able to become part of your industry and to be part of your contribution to my patients for a great tomorrow. I'm not an insurance man, I'm a doctor. I couldn't care about insurance companies and although I love you, I can't care about you. I can care about my patient. And I sincerely hope that you will make it possible for my patient, when that diagnosis is made, to have that knowledge that financially he has a great tomorrow. I believe that insurance is an honest attempt to provide financial security independence when you need it most. And you really need it most when your health starts failing, when the diagnosis of an illness is made, think around your clients and your relatives, because that opportunity to generate that financial security independence you need is threatened by this illness. Now, where does the doctor come into this? I want to go back to the year 1900 and relate to you the causes of death. It was mainly infective, caused by viruses and bacteria. The life expectancy for a male was 50 and for a woman was 54. If I was born in that period, I would have been dead already. You wouldn't need to listen to me today. That would have been like. <laughs> but if you look at it as far as the medical profession and insurance profession need each other, what happened to these people when they developed the infective conditions? Pneumonia, for example. It was very easy. They either died four or five days later, very cheaply. It used to cost 10 pounds to die. It was a very cheap affair. Or they recovered. But what happened? When they recovered, there was not destruction of the heart, lungs, and they could go back and work, the young person, as they've never been ill. But if they died, there was a very young family, a young wife, needing financial independence that was given to them by you with a life insurance policy. Really, a death insurance policy. That's what it meant. Now. The medical profession responded to this state of affairs and created antibiotics. I can assure you today, if you die of pneumonia, you can see your doctor with the greatest of problems. You will get paid. And they developed vaccination immunization so that the infective conditions are no longer causes of death. You see now that the most common cause of death is what we call degenerative diseases resulting from degenerative lifestyle. And I'm very proud, yeah, I'm pleased to appreciate And I'm very proud to tell you that although I come from South Africa, you might not think I'm very intelligent. As you sit here, down here and there, I can sign your death certificate already. 50% <laughs> of you will die of heart attacks. 20 plus will die of cancer. And 10% will die of stroke. And it's getting worse. Why did this happen? Longer life expectancy. Your life expectancy as a male today is 74 years, 
And for the females of the species, and we Barnards love them, your life expectancy is 80 years. Isn't it amazing? So what we doctors gave you, you developed this lifestyle. You said, thank you, doctor. Thank you for curing my pneumonia and enteritis. Now I'm going to abuse my body. I'm going to smoke too much. I'm going to smoke too much. I'm going to drink too much. I'm not going to do enough exercise. I'm going to put on too much weight. I'm going to stress myself too much. And I can talk to you five days about those conditions. But you know, there's also ignorance. Ignorance. Just think with me back. Have you seen that? You remember this man? He sends his friends for a Merry Christmas Chesterfield cigarettes. You can just as well say he sends them death in the box, but he sends them. And now the next advert, we didn't know. The next advert is even better. <laughs> More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Can you just imagine me advertising that today? I will be shot before dawn. Now, what happened because of this degenerative lifestyle is that we developed two types of conditions, the one called atherosclerosis and the one called cancer. Who has atherosclerosis as you sit here? Let me tell you again. If you just born, you're free. At the age of five, 15% of you have atherosclerosis. At the age of 15, 40%, and those of you of over 40, congratulations, you all have atherosclerosis, all of you. Now, what is atherosclerosis? It's a deposit in the arteries of fat. It looks like the English breakfast fixing it up. Or that, uh, that's right. <laughs> and if you, if you want to look at the next slide, you will see that the arteries of the body, those are the arteries, bring the blood supply. It gets blocked with atherosclerosis. And there you can see the English breakfast, the yolk of egg, the butter, and all these things sitting there, causing a blockage of the artery, not enough blood to that muscle, and a heart attack, death, and all these unbelievable things uh, that give me a little bit of income. I don't <laughs> I had a very serious patient uh, the other day, and I treated him and gave him six months to live. But at the end of six months, he didn't pay his account, so I gave him another six months. <laughs> Now, God in his wisdom, unfortunately, unfortunately, blocked the most important arteries of the bodies. Not the arteries to your toenails or your tip of your nose, but the arteries to what we call the vital organs. The coronary arteries, heart, heart attack, carotid artery, stroke, autoortic surgeon, renal arteries, feed kidney failure, vessel artery, peripheral artery gangrene. Can you hear the dread disease conditions entering that? Now, what happens when your arteries get blocked? is that you get the pain in the chest, a piece of your heart die off, you have a heart attack, or the whole heart dies off, and you have death. One of the easiest diagnoses in my profession. <laughs> there are more than 150,000 heart attacks in your country every year. That's not true. Don't feel relieved. It's more than 300,000. 300, that was a slide approximately eight years ago. It's a galloping form of death due to modern lifestyle diseases. That's the brain. That's a stroke. The brain is the very sensitive part of the body. And as you know, and it's very topical today, if the brain don't get enough blood uh, for three minutes, you've got permanent brain damage. And the only occupation that's still suitable is that of a politician. There are more than 100,000 stroke victims in your country every year. Kidney disease, 10,000 new, 10,000 total, 500 new cases. That's a beautiful slide of 